So I got this phone call from Grand, Grand Falls, Windsor by uh, Bruce Rendell, and he called because his next door neighbor is the daughter of this soldier here. So when we did the road show collecting all across Newfoundland and Labrador, I had met with Mary Hicks and she had still had my card and when he, when Bruce said he had this collection of First World War items and he didn't know what to do with it, she gave him my, my card and he gave me a call at my office. They had this trunk that when he came back from the war and he was demobilized in St. John's in uh, 1917, when he got back to Grand Falls in the 1920, he had this trunk and they just kind of put it underneath the staircase and they just never, they just never opened it, they left it there. So when he pulled out this trunk it was uniforms and mitts and caps, helmet, uh, puttees, all kinds of paperwork, um, some bullets and some other, just a whole big collection of First World War items. That was really exciting for us to see. It also included a pair of uh, socks from the First World War and then the trigger mitts and the half mitts that were great because those are things that people didn't keep. There were things that people continued to use after they returned home and they generally weren't kept and they got thrown out or worn out. So tell me about the trigger mitts and why you seem to like them so much. <laughs> I like them so much, they were very unique. They got this uh, chevron design on the cuff uh, and they have a double knit palm. So these the trigger mitts are just something that's so unique to Newfoundland and they're so kind of a part of our heritage and our culture. And they were obviously made a really good item to use during the war because they had the trigger finger. Um, separate from the rest of the mitt. So of course France is very cold and Belgium uh, in the winter times just like here and damp. So they would be the perfect uh, item to be able to be able to still shoot a gun and, and wear and keep your hands warm. Uh, and seeing the design and the fine, there, there's knit so fine with such a very uh, fine wool that you could just see kind of the love and the care and the expertise that went into them. That is really interesting to find a pair that are that old. Uh, that are expertly made and that come from a very important time in Newfoundland and Labrador's history. So they show the, the buttons, the uh, Newfoundland Regiment pins, his dog tags. When I w walked into the house and we, were, me and Bruce were chatting, he just opened the trunk and it was just like amazing to see this, uh, this collection still intact from one individual soldier. So after our development of this exhibit here at the rooms, uh, we kind of thought we had tapped out all of the, uh, the collections across Newfoundland and Labrador, so it was amazing to see this intact collection still uh, out there in somebody's home. So these items are very significant, but they are covered in mold uh, that we could visually see when we took the items out, and you can also smell it. So for us here at the rooms, it's really important that we not infect any of the rest of the collection, which is why we uh, brought them up to a separate room to show you as opposed to within our collections. As soon as I brought them into St. John's yesterday and brought them into the rooms, they were wrapped in plastic. I'm going to rewrap them in plastic and they will be put into a freezer for a couple of weeks in order to kill any of the mold or any type of insect that might be living and harboring itself in there and kept away from the rest of the collection. So until we, we can't put them on display here until they've been uh, frozen and then cleaned, then identified, researched, numbered and then uh, be able to tell the whole story then we could put them on display so it is a several month process sometimes it takes us even longer than that depending on what the content is the lesson in this latest find after all this time after all of our our outreach and uh, is that there's still things hidden away that we're going to continue to find things hopefully families will be able to continually find things and contact myself and just help us be able to preserve and tell the story of Newfoundland and Labrador uh, during all kinds of important aspects of our history.